Warning, this episode features large amounts of bad language. If you feel like you're going to be offended, well, shit, I don't know. Go read a book. COVID-19, a coronavirus meaning it belonged to a large group of illnesses including the common cold. Many countries are still suffering from rising cases, but fortunately, it seems like we can close this chapter of the history book and close the door on the virus for good, and then we can be safe forever, and nothing like this will ever happen again. Yeah, now we are so fucked. Antibiotics are medicines that help stop infections caused by bacteria. They do this by killing the bacteria or keeping them from copying themselves or reproducing. The word antibiotic means against life. Any drug that kills germs in your body is technically an antibiotic. So we've basically got a weaponized pill for murking bacteria. But as it goes, we've kind of fucked that up a bit. Okay, so you know when the doctors make it very clear to finish the whole prescription? Well, there's a good reason for it, and it's called antibiotic resistance. I'll touch on that subject a bit later. Doctors tell you to finish them all so there's a better chance that the antibiotics worked and killed all the bacteria instead of just most of it. See, the thing with bacteria is that it's very adaptable, and it can learn. The bacteria that remains in your body after you've ballsed up taking the entire course of drugs will learn from getting its ass kicked and develop defences against that type of antibiotic for the future. Now imagine, you're going about your business still carrying this super bacteria with you. You're shaking hands, you're opening doors, you're sneezing in people's faces, you know, the usual shit. And you pass your new super bacteria to someone else. Now they go to the doctor and get given the same prescription and again are told to finish it, which they won't because we're stupid. Now the problem being that super bacteria has learnt from our mistakes and these antibiotics are in fact completely useless. This is because the bacteria you sneezed into someone's face was immune to our weapon. Now they go around shaking hands, opening doors, coughing on the elderly. And before you know it, there's a whole new infectious disease that is bodying everyone because you didn't finish the prescription. <sighs> okay, so that's the basic premise of how a superbug will kill everyone, depending on how deadly the precursor disease is, or if it mutates some deadly attributes. And the scariest part of this is they already exist. Okay, so I'm going to break this down. The many intricacies of the smallest thing we consider to be alive is absolutely breathtaking, but it's also very complex, and this subject is near and dear to myself. I often get roasted at work for knowing more about bacteria than football, fixing cars, or some other manly useful shit. But let's see which helps you more when you're dying of the bubonic plague, Jace. Fucking prick. Right, so bacteria, also called germs, are microscopic organisms not visible with the naked eye. Bacteria are single cell microorganisms. Fun fact, bacteria outnumber the human body cells 10 to 1, meaning you're more bacteria than person. Good luck not feeling itchy now. But there are some bacteria. Dark, evil bacteria, hiding in the shadows, waiting to attack like a table in a dark room. Their only job is to make more of themselves, using your body as a breeding ground. <laughs> that is gross, but rather spectacular. So one day, someone who's sick with a bacterial infection snots in your face. <laughs> that bacteria they are carrying has just entered your body through a nasal passage or through your mouth, and it's now on its way to ruin your day. Let's say it's just entered your lungs, just one little bacterium, and it settles down. Soon, one becomes two. Due to binary fission! <sighs> yes, due to binary fission. Basically, the bacteria's version of mitosis, which is cell division. So, the bacteria increase exponentially. Two become four, four becomes eight, eight becomes 16, and so on. The bacteria keeps doubling until there's millions of bacteria infecting your lungs. And at a certain point, the bacteria start to change the environment around them, producing a whole host of unhealthy shit that makes us want to curl up in bed in the fetal position, while experiencing, among many things, such as headaches, fevers, and a chesty cough. Then, congratulations! You are now the proud owner of a chest infection. About three days in, you start to think, that's it, I'm sick of this. 
I'd call them the doctors. You get an appointment and the same old standard antibiotics take them all fuck off. But you don't because you're a tit and now you may have just developed another dangerous superbug. In short, very. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a jellyfish hating nihilistic madman. Ah oh, shit. That was such a better channel name than Intensely Curious. Anyway, yeah. We're up shit creek without a paddle. Seeing how badly the world was affected by Covid was a real eye opener. We are so underprepared for something really deadly. And that deadly thing is getting more present every day. There is currently, excuse me for pronunciation here, Candida auris, which is by rights a fungal superbug and is multi-drug resistant where some strains have developed resistance to all three classes of antifungals. And let me just say, thank god it's not an airborne virus, because it is at a 35.2% mortality rate over a 30 day period, which means 3 out of 10 people who catch it are likely to die from it. Whereas Covid's mortality rate is around 1%, which is 1 out of 100 people. Honestly, the facts and figures are very blurry at this point, and that's the best I've found with the tools I have. And something else, it's not just humans taking antibiotics incorrectly, it's also our meat production. Cows are fed ungodly amounts of antibiotics to keep them from getting sick when they're all housed together, thus ramping up fine-tuned superbug production. So yeah. No, it's a bad, bad human. But this is only the start of it. Yeah, chest infections are bad, but you know what's worse? A superbug virus. Now you see why bacteria are bad, and they are bad. Well, viruses are so much worse because they are so much smaller and they spread so much faster. A bacteria will set up shop and just crack on multiplying, whereas a virus will seek out healthy host cells and infect them, basically turning them into factories where more viruses are made. The cell will subsequently explode, releasing all the new viral cells, and each of them will go on to infect new healthy cells. In a nutshell, explains this so much better than me in their video, The Ebola Virus Explained. Link in the description as always. But this is why Covid is such a big concern. Yeah, it may not have been deadly to a vast proportion of the public, but it's got the potential to be an absolute monster of destruction. Covid-19 is a virus, and viruses always have the chance to mutate and become something so much worse. Imagine a simple mutation in Covid to say fill the lungs with liquid to help with mobility. Fantastic for the virus, massively life-threatening to us. And that's just not a hypothetical. It's called pulmonary edema. Any disease that attacks the heart and make it not beat as it's supposed to has the potential to cause it. So it's not too far-fetched for COVID to attack the heart and cause that. The longer COVID is around, the longer the chance it has to mutate. And when they say it's dangerous, it is. Not for the immediate threat to life, but for the damage potential it has. Covid is dangerous for a plethora of reasons, but I believe its chance to evolve into something more deadly is the main cause for concern. I sometimes try to finish my videos on a happy note, or saying it's not as bad as it seems, but in this one, it's going to be more of a plea and a lesson. Antibiotics should be a last resort, and only given when needed. When taken correctly, taking all of them and not just enough to treat the symptoms, or when you've got a cold, they don't work like that by the way, they can be a powerful weapon against germs that want to kill us. Oh, and eat your fucking greens, even if they do taste like shit, I'm looking at you broccoli. But most importantly, stay intensely curious. <laughs>